can you really make ten thousand dollars or more in a month operating a spinner slash cargo van we're going to talk about that on this segment of the gig geezer back in january i began my little search and i searched high and low on the internet for just anything that would kind of get me going in terms of my uh, ownership and operation of this spinner slash cargo van. And I looked at the, um, the carriers, the logistic places, and many of them spoke of how you can earn at least 25, you can earn anywhere between $2,500 and $4,000 a week if you could get on with us. And some of them said that you could make an upwards of 8000 a month. Some said 10000 a month. Some said in upwards of 14000 a month. And I looked at those places. I even tried to apply to those places. You know, they asked you um, 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 what, what type of van you have, your name, your, your um, phone number, your address. Um, do you have insurance? Things like that. I never got a response from the, many of the places. There were places in which I got responses, but as I've documented many a times here on the Gig Geezer channel, I said that I did not think it was worth my while once I began to crunch the numbers and realized that what I was doing at the time was somewhat on pace or within the draft of what those people had established in terms of the numbers that a driver could make with them. Well, I guess I keep I guess I, I guess I keep bringing up this thing about um, what a person can make and all because um, I'm finding that a lot of folk really people really want to get into um, op owning the op ownership and operation of a spinner slash cargo man because they see here on YouTube that there's a chance to make money making more money than they could doing DoorDash Grubhub Uber Eats Instacart and the like more money than what they would make on their on their actual w-2 it's always been my endeavor since i created this youtube channel to always provide factual information and um my intent my intent has always been to inform and educate and if i happen to entertain you well that's just a bonus what i want to what i want to establish before i get into this particular segment of the gig geezer is that um what I did find out, and it's only been recent, that many of those over-the-road places that advertise saying that you can make $2,500 to $4,000 in a week, what they don't tell you is that that's based on a, a, on a metric of earning anywhere between $0.80, cent, 80 cent a mile and $1.20 a mile. So that means if you just do simple math, you're going to have to do a lot of driving. You're not going to make 99% of the time, you're not going to make $2,500 to four thousand dollars in a week driving maybe 1500 miles it's not going to happen you're going to have to drive if you do the simple math at least three thousand miles a week and on the low end that would get you to about twenty five hundred dollars and then on the high end that could get you anywhere between thirty six hundred dollars on up but then again per month that means you're going to have to do that each week and there's no guarantee that you're going to get confined you're going to the um the dispatcher or or even by on your own abilities, you're going to be able to find consistent loads while you're out there on the road. So you got to keep that in mind. Well, I've talked for about five minutes, and this is my usual line. If you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer and any other segment of the Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. Now, as a writer, I will say that I've kind of buried my lead into the second or third paragraph. And so this is setting up as like a straight news story where the impact is in that third paragraph. And so for that, with the, with this being now the third paragraph of my straight news story, what I want to share with you is how I have made $10,000 in a month. And that's this month, the month of July 2023. And so we're going to go right into what I documented yesterday july 29th 2023 it is saturday morning january 29 2023 and i am just south of three hours into this early morning grind and i i figured that i would document what's going on today because um I know from a numeric standpoint, I started today at $9,645 for the month. 
for the week, $1,905. And so what's that telling me is that um, 10,000 is definitely within sight. And of course, another 2,000 week is within sight. Um, I started out with a, an Instacart for $30, that paid $30 and 31 cent. It was 12 items from a Piggly Wiggly. And then I caught a $17.31 point pickup, as you see here on the inset. It went over in a part of the Northwest Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area that I'm more than familiar with, but also is where my mailbox is. So I had a chance to not only drop off something for some money, but also stop by a mailbox and check on whatever mail there was. Um, upon leaving, um, Walmart, which is where I picked up that order, um, I caught a $10.17 Uber Eats that was literally going on the other side of the freeway to the uh, Land Rover Jaguar dealership. And while I was over there, I picked up a $24 and change Instacart. Now, um, I'm, I'm actually, as, we're, as I'm documenting this, driving to the drop-off location for the Instacart. The Instacart was all of these items here. Full, large um, packs of uh, toilet paper that's going to a hotel. And so, um, if it pays what I think it is, but let's just say preliminary estimate, that's gonna put me at about $82 in change for the day and about $1,987 for the week and then $9,727 for the month. One thing that I've noticed during the month of July is that gas prices have gone up by about 70%. And that's a concern when you're out here because regardless of what people say, gas is gonna be one of your top two to three um, big ticket items each month. And so um, a couple of things that come to mind when you're out here, um, when you're out here um, putting in your grind and hustle, be it with a Sprinter slash cargo van or even with just your personal vehicle, is that you've got to man you've got to find ways to manage your tank. How do you manage your tank? Well, managing your tank involves um, uh, literally when do you fill, put money in your tank? Um, obviously, as the gas prices get get higher, you don't want to be hit with that big that big outlay. I mean, right now at I mean, I've seen gas at $3.69, $3.59 here in the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area. Um, in fact, I put I put in uh, just south of 40, I put in $45 this morning and that got me 12 gallons. Well, and that put me a little over half full. Uh, what I mean, so that was, that was $45, $45, but to fill up this tank at $3.50, as I shared in this particular segment of the Gig Geezer, that's $87.50, and that's for 25 gallons. Now, obviously, what you wanna do is maximize your opportunities while you're out here. You don't wanna be chasing money by going here, 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 and all to make uh, what you're gonna make. So what you're hoping to do is, as I pointed out in this particular segment of the Gig Geezer, is you wanna, you wanna stack opportunities as opportunities um, as opportunities are, are made available to you. And so as it turned out like this morning, um, some, someone may call it uh, multi-apping, and it was a little bit of multi-apping, but it's just um, stacking of opportunities. I guess um, the reason why I say it's multi it's stacking of opportunities because I have to incorporate um, the over the road slash um, regional opportunities that I got, like in this particular segment of the gig user, along with the gig apps. And then, if there's any uh, if there's any other opportunities out there, well, then there's that there's that you have to deal with. So you want to stack opportunities so that you can maximize your money and also justify the miles that you're driving. Another thing that you want to do, I mean, dollar per mile almost goes out of the window when gas prices gets like this because you know you're saying that you won't move for three dollars until until it shows three four dollars a mile. Well, your ass may be sitting there for a while. So then that's where stacking of opportunities justifies your, some of your moves out there. Now, um, you also gotta understand that gas is not a fixed expense. 
a fixed expense, as I've shared in another segment of the Gig Geezer, is something like your insurance payment. That's something that you know that you're going to pay every month. Um, another fixed expense may be, um, like for me, office rent. That's $315 a month. That's that's something I know I got to put out by the fifth of the month every month. The car, the um, vehicle insurance, $1,520 by the 23rd of the month. So those are fixed expenses. Gas becomes a variable expense because you don't know how much gas you're gonna re you're gonna require of yourself for that month, and you don't know what the prices are gonna be. One week it could be it could drop all the way down to two dollars and fifty nine cents, and the next week is up to three dollars and nine cents. Or in the past week here, at least in this market, it's gone up fifty cent a gallon, and in some cases sixty cent a gallon. So that's why it's 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 considered a variable expense. But that said, what do you do? What do you do? So you don't chase money. You try to stack opportunities. Now, you may say then, here's where a contract comes into play. A contract gives you, lets you know exactly how much you can budget. You're going to be budgeting and all that stuff for your cost per week. But you don't know about traffic. You don't know about traffic. As in this particular situation here, you may be in you may be in a stand, you may be in stop and go traffic. And all you're going to see with your gas tank and your money like that so you can't even you cannot even budget you cannot really um, consider gas in a fixed expense it is still a variable expense because there are other factors that are that are also contingent upon your gas consumption so one of the things that you want to do too is while you're out here doing your grind and your grind and hustle you want to consider your the routes that you take you always want to take a route that's you also want to consider with your opportunities is this something that's going to take you into traffic this is something that's going to take you away from traffic. And if it is something that you're still going to do, you want to try to find a route that's going to take you away from the traffic. So that's something else that you have to consider when you're managing your tank. Now, another thing that you also got to keep in mind is your, your mileage range, your fuel range. Your fuel range is basically your gas mileage, your average gas mileage times your gas tank, and that is your fuel range. And so in my case, my fuel range, even though I, even, I say my, I know for a fact that my gas mileage is anywhere between 17 and 20 miles to a gallon. On the high end, that means that it's 500 miles max range. On the low end, it could be 425 miles. And so I usually say anywhere between 400 and 450 miles. But realistically, the number that I consider is 425. Now, at 425, that's 17 miles to a gallon. That's on the low end, but I do get, but usually I'm putting money in the tank somewhere in that 400 to 425 mile range, and I still have money, I still have gas in the tank. Usually it's somewhere just below a quarter of a tank. But you also, so that means then you plan your day sometimes according to your, your mileage range. You wanna try to, you wanna try to make as much money, money as you can on that tank without having to put additional money in. So that's enough, so that's that's some pointers that you can take into consideration while you're out here as gas prices have gone up. But also, um, just just even, just just simple business. This is something that's helped me with when I operated primarily my F-150 and also my uh, Pathfinder and my Maxima and my Ford Taurus. All right, I am, about 15 minutes removed from the last opportunity that I took advantage of for today, Saturday, July 29, 2023. And um, what it was was 50, 50 bags of fucking mulch loaded up on a pallet, although I had to take a couple of a couple of um, rows off. And it was on the freight app, and it paid $249. So that put me over 2 Gs two pounds for the sixth straight week and also $2,239 and change for this week. Um, today, all together, $334 and change, just a tick over $334 and four and a half hours, so a half a day. Somebody can argue and say five day, uh, a full day, whatever, but I'd say it's typically half a day for me because anything under anything under five hours is, is really a half a day. And, um, all for the week, I put in 52 hours, so just under 10 hours a day. Um, 
Well, that's pretty good money for 52 hours, any way you look at it. I had every intention not to come back out today. And the reason being, I was tired. In fact, I had slept for like the last, I want to say two, three, well, at least the last three hours at a minimum. And what ended up happening is that I woke up and then I looked at my apps. I still had a point pickup um, offer that I'd accepted hours ago. And I know how point pickup works and that you can hold something for a long time, especially if you're local. And I was, I was actually going to contact them and ask them to unassign me from the order. But then I turned on DoorDash. First order comes up on the screen is this. Out, you see it here. $34.99 order. Um, the, the arrival time is not expected for probably another 20 minutes. And so this is the order. This is the order. It puts me over $10,000 for the month. And it puts me in a position to also claim my best week ever operating in my ownership and operation of a spinner slash cargo van. I am sure to make over $2,273 in a week with this particular order. So I am just a few moments away, a few minutes away from arriving. Uh, I'm just a few minutes away from arriving at um, Outback Steakhouse. And what makes this order, um, what makes this such a good situation is that it allows me really to stack them uh, because the drop-off location is roughly five minutes from the Walmart where I got to pick up the uh, Walmart order that's going back in towards downtown Columbia, South Carolina. So, um, you know what? I could go through the machinations of I could go through the machinations of showing the entire order process. I don't know if it's really worth it. And the reason being is that I know, again, there are people who would make a real celebratory um, situation out of this, but I just don't feel that there's no reason for me to be celebrating as it is. I'm, I'm documenting this as if I was going for $6,000 or $7,000 for the month or $8,000 for the month. Um, but yes, I feel a lot rested after a few hours of sleep. Um, but there is more to share in this particular segment of the Gig Geezer, and that's the reason why um, my, my tone hasn't changed, because I want to talk about some other things that I think make sense with um, uh, this particular, uh, with this discussion of making 10000 in a month and making what appears to be now consistently over 2000 in a week, or at least going through a stretch in which I am making over 2000 in a week. And I'll get back with you after I pick up that order. I am back out, and um, my wait time at Outhouse was less than 10 minutes. Shocking. It's usually not less than 10 minutes on a Saturday, but it is this weekend. Um, maybe it's because I got there at the right time, and so that just tells me that, hey, this entire uh, this entire uh, stretch of order opportunities that I'm, that I'm sharing with you, or I'm documenting, just must have been for me because usually I would be waiting probably another 15 to 20 minutes beyond the estimated arrival time for uh, an outback order like this. But what I want to do is um, I plan to um, share this information on Monday, but I'm going to go ahead on and share this information and then top it with something else. But what I want to share is really the breakdown of at least conceptually how I earn my money. And I, and this is really, this may be repeating myself, but I'm gonna do it conceptually. There are three components to, um, my, to, to my entire enterprise. Things that I've been very consistent in sharing with y'all over, over the past several months in my Sprinter Slice Cargo Band ownership experience. They are, um, I started out knowing that I was gonna be working gig, gig apps, primarily at the beginning, gig food delivery apps. And then as I, um, get as I got on with other apps um, with with knowledge of my owning a Sprinter size cargo van, the last mile delivery apps. I've shared this in another segment of the Gig Geezer. I've shared it in this segment of the Gig Geezer. And I've shared it in this segment of the Gig Geezer. And I've shared it in, I've shared stuff in this segment of the Gig Geezer. 
Then the other component that I shared was that um, at least this was a big part of things that I really thought where I'd be making um, at least, I probably thought that I'd be making 40% of my money doing this and that's the regional slash over the road um, brokered opportunities. And it's only been within the last week or so that I've begun to see more of those opportunities. And I have begun to bid or book load opportunities as I've um, um, then before. Now, many of these opportunities are anywhere between 190 and 300 plus dollars, but these are these are opportunities that are within driving t for, within driving distance for me. And what, and what I mean by driving distance is that yes, from the point of pickup to the point of drop off, they are going for over a dollar a mile, absolutely. But there are also trips that are less than less than like five hours of driving, five six hours of driving. So that means that, that that's something I could do in a day. Um, like like uh, in this segment of the Gig Geezer, I shared about how I stacked opportunities. It was a pickup from uh, Charleston, and it was coming back to Columbia. And then I was able to stack going while in Charleston, waiting for the order, a roadie. But then coming back, it was it was in the it was in the middle of a catering opportunity that I had in Columbia. That order went from it was from Charleston to Lexington, but I say Columbia. Anyway. The other component that I've yet to develop is a cash game. Now, the cash game is something that everyone, everybody could be doing with their Sprinter slash cargo van. What you do is gonna be what you, what you do. I have an idea of the things that I would like to do with my van in terms of outside, what I consider would be outside opportunities. Now. Some people, some people may ask me about from a, how do I handle that from a tax standpoint. I'm going to share to you this way, at least what I anticipate what I will be doing since I have not developed a cash gain. Because I bowled at, I've bowled at the regional pro level and because I am a PBA member, I pay a membership, I pay an annual membership fee or monthly membership fee. And then um, I pay for tournaments that I bowl in, and then I pay for I, I pay for equipment, and then the money that I make from my bowling I have claimed either either actual 1099 earnings from bowling, usually that comes from the PBA, or um, I've claimed the cash earnings that I've made from many of the high level scratch tournaments that I bowl in because many of those are those are cash they're cash payout they're cash entries and then they're cash payouts, but. The reason why I have claimed them is because of all the expenses that I claim from bowling. So that's that's how I will probably handle handle my cash gain. How you handle your cash gain that is on you, and I would recommend that you consult your uh, financial your your tax your, your professional on something like that. But it is an important it is a, it is a um, it is a component of your strategy that you can develop. As I've said in this segment of the Gig Geezer, and maybe in, a, in this segment of the Gig Geezer, there is more than one way of earning money while operating your Sprinter slash cargo van. And you, while you may be on every app, the thing is that how you're working those apps to your benefit, as well as how you're working the over the road slash regional game. A lot of this is on you. I can't. T I can't tell you everything, but I'm. Hopefully, I am communicating information, communicating facts, communicating insight that may cause you to think differently or actually be of some help and benefit. Now, how does this um, contrast to someone else I know in the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area? Now, this particular driver, he actually makes more than I do, man. I'm I'm here on YouTube talking about making two G's a week and hitting seven, eight, nine, now ten thousand dollars a month, and he's doing that every fucking week. He's making actually like three thousand a week, and he's making over twelve thousand a month. Now, what I do know about him is that he works primarily his cash game. His cash game. I'm not going to divulge what his cash game is, but I know he makes good money doing his cash game working out of his Sprinter slash cargo van. He also works gig apps. And to my frustration sometimes, he beats me to opportunities and tells me about it. But he works gig apps as well. Um, 
Um, and then there's another component to his um, enterprise that he's just added. And I know that's going to take him to, I believe that that's going to take him to 15000 a month and more than likely 5000 a week. I really do. But just listen, you hear me out now. He's got a cash game. He works gig apps in this order, in this order priority, but then there's another component to his game that I'm not sharing, but it is something that a lot of people could do as a lot of people talk about it on YouTube. I'm hinting at it, but there's a lot of people talk about it on YouTube. A lot of people fail at it, but he he's not failing at it. I, I'll, I'll put it to you like that. For a lot of folk who are really, really trying to uh, I'm trying to get into the van, to the cargo van business, and uh, I'm trying to get into the cargo van game, and I'm looking at this, and I'm blah blah blah. Well, again, there's two components that you could get into right immediately, or at least you could try to develop or build your enterprise, and that's solely cash, cash game, and gig apps. There's no shame working the gig food delivery apps. There's no shame delivering to somebody in uh, DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, if you get on the catering apps, delivered and delivered that. In fact, it looks pretty good when you show up at places and you got a sprinter, a sprinter van and you're delivering a big catering order, as I did just earlier this week, $2,200 or $1,900 catering order, stuff is in the back of the van, it's not jostled all over the place, I come out with my 4-in-1 dolly and I got stuff on a 4-in-1 dolly, that shit looks good, man, people remember that stuff. So... There, there's, there's, you can develop just on those two components, but you only can go so far, or as far as you want to go. That's the thing. You can go as far as you want to go. Now, the next one is contracts. Now, while I have not been a big fan of contracts, but contracts is a component of earning money working your Sprinter slash cargo van. The reason why contracts hasn't really been worth it for me is because what I have been able to do with gig apps and the regional slash over the road opportunities and soon with a cash game. Why am I gonna why am I gonna box myself in with a contract? But I understand that some folks feel as if they are in charge, they're in business for themselves, and they're got they they they're they're able to know that they got certain type of money coming in whenever it is. That feels good. That's a certain level of comfort. I get that, but contracts aren't for me, at least as I operate my sprinter slash cargo man this way then there's the cash game again gig apps so you've got you've got many combinations which you can make money it's just how you're going to make it work for yourself now i am actually what i'm going to do is i've got 40 minutes to drop off this order so what i'm what this doordash order and so what i'm going to do is swing over here to um walmart if they still got if they still feel like fucking dealing with me because i've held it for five hours at least five hours um, so go over here, pick up the Walmart on uh, point pickup, and then I've got money in hand on two two apps, and then this is how you stack order opportunities. This is how you work them too, hand hand. And so um, I'll, hopefully I'll get back with you um, within the next several minutes with both orders. All right, I am I have just left the Walmart parking lot with a 65 inch TV, very common item that I seem to pick up from Walmart whether it's on point pickup or roadie um it's either going to be a 65 inch tv or a 75 inch tv those seem to be the two most common things that i pick up when it's a walmart order um the next common item is a grill of various sizes and um the next common item is either um ac uh filters or um a rake yeah believe it or not those are the items I tend to pick up from Walmart on those two apps. Now, I'm actually less than 10 minutes away from the drop-off location. So my strategy of stopping by Walmart first, knowing that I have a lot of time to drop off this DoorDash order. In fact, I still got 30 minutes to drop off this DoorDash order. And if you go back to this old segment of the Gig Geezer, I talk about um, taking advantage of your estimated arrival time working the DoorDash app, or you may you, you can incorporate Uber Eats app because Uber Eats now gives you expected times of arrival. And you can kind of incorporate incorporate that with Grubhub as well. Um, but DoorDash is probably most notorious for sweating drivers um, when it comes to 
arrival times. To tie things up, that DoorDash that DoorDash order that was for thirty four ninety nine, you would not believe what happened. I get to the actual residence. I'm outside, about to pick up the pick up the bags and take them to the house, and I get the notification. I get the DoorDash notification that the order being canceled. So I actually got paid the full amount, thirty four dollars ninety nine cent. Now I did complete delivery of that 65 inch TV, which is at a um, downtown building here in the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area. And then to round out the day, I completed another $15 DoorDash order. Um, and that brought me for the day to $401 and change. And for the week, $2,306 and 60 cent. Now, um, I may not have answered all the questions in this particular segment of the gig geezer about making $10,000 a month, but I did show you how it was done, at least how I did it. And I have given, and I may have provided you some, I may have provided you the blueprint in which you can make it happen for yourself. And with that, if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the gig geezer and any other segment of the gig geezer, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome the comments in the section below. I'm Inwood Lane, and as always, may your grind and may your hustle continue.